Shalom. Shalom. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give glory to Ahaya Ashri Ahaya and our Dono Yache and our mother, Uwaka Kwadoshi. Amen. We are thankful for this time with you all. We're going to pick back up in the understanding the church and how it's being built. We're going to actually pick up from Parable 9, chapter 10, verse 5, and we're going to continue. All right? But I caught hold of his wallet and began to adjure him by Ahia that he would explain to me all what he has showed me. He said unto me, I am busy for a little while, and then I will explain everything to thee. Await me here till I come. I say to him, Sir, when I am here alone, what shall I do? Thou art not alone, saith he, for these virgins are here with thee. Commend me then to them, say I. And the shepherd called them to him and saith to them, I commend this man to you till I come. And he departed. So I was alone with the virgins, and they were most cheerful and kindly disposed to me, especially the four of them that were the more glorious in appearance. The virgins say to me, Today the shepherd cometh not here. What then shall I do? Say if I stay for him, say they till eventide. And if he come, he will speak with thee. But if he come not, then thou shalt stay here with us till, till he cometh. I say to them, I will await him till evening. And if he come not, I will depart home and return early in the morning. But they answered and said unto me, To us thou wast entrusted. Thou canst not depart from us. Where then, say I, shall I remain? Thou shalt press the night with us. Say they as a brother, not as a husband, for thou art our brother. I right. see that this is the unity in the spirit when we see each other as brother and sister. That's right. And henceforward we would deal with thee, for we love thee dearly, but I was ashamed to abide with them. This was his growth. Right. <laughs> he, he's growing here. They're growing him. And we're going to see his growth as they continue with him. And she that seemed to be the chief of them began yeah. to kiss and embrace me. That was the faith. And the others seeing her embrace me, they too began to kiss me and led me round the tower and to sport with me. Like little children. Right. And I had become, as it were, a younger man. This won't become his children. Yachi said, unless you be as these little children, you shall in no wise enter the kingdom. That's right. You see how through the Holy Spirit, he was putting off the deeds of the flesh. Because right. at first, his flesh was having him ashamed right. of it. Like, yeah, then, I came, uh, you know, I can't dwell with y'all. Right. right. And then when the spirits embraced him, and notice faith was what embraced him and kissed him. Right. And that spirit came over him, and then the rest came onto him. He became as a child. Right. So it's a testimony for us to see how bearing the fruits of the Spirit will bring us back to being children again, that we may enter into the kingdom. That's right. And I commenced myself likewise to sport with them. For some of them began to dance, others to skip, others to sing. But I kept silence and walked with them round the tower and was glad with them. I'm just amazed. <laughs> right. Keep Good. around that little girl. That's right. right. But when evening came, I wished to go away home, but they would not let me go, but detained me. And I stayed the night with them, and I slept by the side of the tower. For the virgins spread their linen tunics on the ground, and made me lie down in the midst of them. And they did nothing else but pray. Mm -hmm. And I prayed with them without ceasing, and not less than they. And the virgins rejoiced that I so prayed. These are Holy Spirits looking at him like, look at you. <laughs> look at you with your, with your uh, prayer without ceasing. <laughs> and I stayed with the virgins until the morning, to the second hour. Then came the shepherd and saith to the virgins, Have you done him any injury? Ask him, say they. And I say to him, Sir, I was rejoiced to stay with them. On what didst thou sup? Say if he, I sup, sir, say I, on the words of Ahaya the whole night through. Man shall not live by bread, bread alone. alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Ahaya, Alahaya. Right. Then we see what Yache talked about. We see it being done here. This is how we know these records are true. All right. Did they treat thee well? Say if he, yes, sir, say I. Now we're going into interpretations, everything right. that was seen. Now, say if he. What wouldst thou hear first in the order as thou showedest to me? 
sir, from the beginning, say I, I request thee, sir, to explain to me exactly in the order that I should inquire of thee. According as thou desirest, saith he, even so will I interpret to thee, and I will conceal nothing whatever from thee. First of all, sir, say I, explain this to me. The rock and the gate, what is it? This rock, saith he, and the gate is the son of Elohim. How, sir, say I, is the rock ancient and the gate recent? Listen, saith he, and understand, foolish man. The son of Elohim is older than all his creation, so that he became the father's advisor in his creation. Therefore also he is ancient. But the gate, why is it recent, sir, say I? Because, saith he, he was made manifest in the last days of the consummation. And that's how we know at the time Yahche came, in that time when the Greeks and Romans, we had been in the last days since that time. Right. Right? Therefore the gate was made recent, that they which are to be saved may enter through it into the kingdom of Elohim. Didst thou see, saith he, that the stones which came through the gate have gone to the building of the tower? But those which came not through it were cast away again to their own place. I saw, sir, say I. Thus saith he, no one shall enter into the kingdom of Elohim, except he receive the name of his son. Yahshua is the name of salvation, the only name given by which men may be saved. There is none other. But if thou wishest to enter into any city, and that city is walled all round and has one gate only, Canst thou enter into that city except through the gate which it hath? Why, how, sir, say I, is it possible otherwise? If then thou canst not enter into the city except through the gate itself, even so, saith he, a man cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim except by the name of his son that is beloved by him. And this gives also confirmation of what Yahweh himself talked about in John chapter 10. Right. And see how this record is true, and the angel of repentance is building on the understanding of Yahche, because it was Yahche who sent him. And you see, now we understand more of what that meant when Yahche spoke in John chapter 10. Right. And pertaining. Any man that come any other way is a thief and a robber. Right. I'm in uh, Parable 9, chapter 12, verse 6. All right. Didst thou see, saith he? The multitude that is building the tower. I saw it, sir, say I. They say if he are all glorious angels. With thee then Ahia is walled around, but the gate is the son of Elohim. There is this one entrance only to Ahia. No one then shall enter in unto him otherwise than through his son. Didst thou see, saith he, the six men and the glorious and mighty men in the midst of them? Him that walked about the tower and rejected the stone from the building. I saw him, sir, say I. And the glorious man, saith he, is the son of Elohim. And those six are the glorious angels who guard him on the right hand and on the left. Of these glorious angels, not one, saith he, shall enter in unto Elohim without him. Those are six of the seven uh, archangels. Enoch chapter 20, these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels who is over the world and over Tartarus. Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the spirits of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of luminaries. Michael, one of the holy angels to wit. He that is set over the best part of mankind and over chaos. And Sarakael one of the holy angels who is set over the spirits who sin in spirit, and Gabriel, one of the holy angels who is over paradise and the serpents and the cherubim, and then Remiel, one of the holy angels whom Elohim set over those who rise. And the angel of repentance, this is another angel named Fenuel, that's the one that's speaking with Hermas. Right. So all seven of them are there, but six are walking with them. Yeah, because Michael is doing something else. Right. There's other parts that mention Michael. So the six of those are of the seven, excluding Michael. Can you read it? Okay. Whosoever shall not receive his name shall not enter into the kingdom of Elohim. So you got to receive the name of Yahche to enter into the kingdom. That name only. Right. That's why it's so important. Only by that name can you overcome the wealth of the enemy. And by that name, it's the only way you can bear the fruits of the Spirit. 
And it's important to understand because we're reading about how the church is being built so that we may have understanding to enter into it and make sure we are one of those stones that are placed in it. And these virgins, who are they? They said, He a holy spirit, and no man can otherwise be found in the kingdom of Valahim unless these shall clothe him with their garment. For if thou receive only the name, but receive not the garment from them, thou profitest nothing. For these virgins are powers of the son of Elohim. If therefore thou bear the name, and bear not his power, thou shalt bear his name to none effect. There we see very plainly for us that are seeking to enter this church, we have to have that name, Yache, and we have to have all twelve of the Holy Spirit. Right. And the stone said he, which thou didst see, cast away. These bear the name, but clothe not themselves with the raiment of the virgins. Of what sort, sir, say I, is their raiment? The names themselves, said he, are their raiment. Whosoever bears the name of the son of Elohim ought to bear the names of these also. But even the son himself bears the names of these virgins. So even Yahweh is clothed with them. Right. And he is our example that we must sustain to, to be the image of Elohim. Hence, we have to bear them as well. Okay. As many stones, said he, as thou sawest enter into the building of the tower, being given in by their hands, and waiting for the building, they have been clothed in the power of these virgins. And that's why we saw only, we had read in the last time, how only the stones that went in by the virgins were able to be a part of the tower and change their color. Because right. that's the only way in, through the Holy Spirit, through Anyache's name. For this cause thou seest the tower made a single stone, and with the rock. So, through, also, so we see through those Holy Spirits, we become a single stone. Right. That's how we become one faith, one doctrine, unity, one, one body. Spirit, in this right. Area. Through the Holy Spirits. That's why it's so important to bear them in order to be a part of it. For this cause thou seest the tower made a single stone with the rock. So also they that have believed in the higher through his son and clothed themselves in these spirits shall become one spirit and one body and their garments all of one color. But such persons that bear the names of the virgins have their dwelling in the tower. And so there's no way to believe in Ahaya without Yache. That's right. And then by believing in Ahaya through Yache, we also have to clothe ourselves with these spirits. Only through that shall we become one spirit and one body. This is the true gospel, and this is why it's so essential to do these things, to partake in the actual church. Right. The stones then, sir, say I, which are cast aside, wherefore were they cast aside? For they passed through the gate and were placed in the building of the tower by the hands of the virgins. Right, this is for us to understand how we can get put out. Let's continue. Since all these things interest thee, saith he, and thou inquirest diligently, listen as touching the stones that have been cast aside. These all, saith he, receive the name of the son of Elohim. So receive the Ache. Mm -hmm. And receive likewise the power of these virgins. Started walking in the fruits of the spirit. When then they received these spirits, they were strengthened. So we had help from on high, all right? That's right. And were with the servants of Elohim. And they had one spirit and one body and one garment. For they had the same mind and wrought righteousness. There we see how the true servants of Elohim are made. Let's continue. After a certain time, then they were persuaded by the women whom thou sawest clad right. in black raiment. And now we see what happens when we get comfortable. Right persuaded notice we were deceived right I continue and having their shoulders bare and their hair loose and beautiful in form when they saw them they desired them and they clothed themselves with their power and they stripped off from themselves the power of the virgin there we see we can't serve two masters that's right so you can't operate in the works of the flesh and say that the Holy Spirit is operating in you right it's impossible right because the Holy Spirit is holy and undefiled departs when thoughts of iniquity enter him. They then were cast away from the house of Elohim and delivered to those women. But they that were not deceived by the beauty of these women remained in the house of Elohim. So we see there's only one way to remain, stay away from the lust of the flesh. That's right. <laughs> the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. That's, That's right. Because right. it can't be obedient to the law of Elohim. 
So thou hast, saith he, the interpretation of them that were cast aside. Now we have that understanding and admonition to know we want to partake in this building. We have to stand aloof from these evil women. What then, sir, say I, if these men, being such as they are, should repent and put away their desire for these women, and return unto the virgins, and walk in their power and in their works, shall they not enter into the house of Elohim? They shall enter, saith he, if they shall put away the works of these women, and take again the power of the virgins. So there's opportunity for repentance. So we have to put it away and take on the power of the virgins. Right? We cannot keep it and keep dealing with it and think we're going to go back in. That's not what the scriptures say. And walk in their works. For this is the reason why there was also a cessation of the building, that if these repent, they may go into the building of the tower. But if they repent not, then others will go, and these shall be cast away finally. For all these things I give thanks unto Ahia, because he had compassion on all that called upon his name, and sent forth the angel of repentance to us that had sinned against him, and refreshed our spirit. And when we were already ruined and had no hope of life, restored our life. This is why this book is so important for us that need repentance. Now, sir, say I, show me why the tower is not built upon the ground, but upon the rock and upon the gate. Because thou art senseless, saith he, and without understanding thou askest the question. I am obliged, sir, say I, to ask all questions of thee, because I am absolutely unable to comprehend anything at all. For all are great and glorious and difficult for men to understand. Listen, saith he, the name of the son of Elohim is great and incomprehensible, and sustaineth the whole world. If then all creation is sustained by the son of Elohim, what thinkest thou of those that are called by him, and bear the name of the son of Elohim, and walk according to his commandments? This is what we have to understand, how powerful the name of the son of Elohim is that we may be strengthened to obey his voice. Notice we have to obey the name and walk according to his commandments. That's why I said, if you love me, you will do whatsoever I command you. He is able to pull us out of any and everything that we have been facing and are facing in this life. I'm going back to uh, Shepherd of Hermes. All right, you call out the chapter, please. Parable 9, chapter 14, verse 6. See if thou then what manner of man he sustaineth. Even those that bear his name with their whole heart, he himself then is become their foundation. Wholeheartedness, doing all things in humility, simplicity, and guilelessness. And he sustaineth them gladly, because they are not ashamed to bear his name. And we'd be not ashamed to do it. It's not a grievance. We don't be deceived by the women clad in black, but we know this is our joy. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins and of the women that are clothed in black garments. Now we're going to see who the virgins are, and then we're going to see who those women in black are, so we can especially stand aloof from them. That's right. Here saith he, the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners. The first is faith, and the second, continence, and the third, power, and the fourth, long suffering. But the other station between them have these names, simplicity, guilelessness, purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, and love. He that beareth these names in the name of the son of Elohim shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Here saith he likewise the Please. names of the women that wear the black garments. Please look up those definitions of those words. Yes, indeed. To really attain unto that goal that we're trying to get to together through Yache. And likewise, uh, look up the definitions of the women clad in black, because those are the ones you want to stand aloof from, and you have to understand your enemy to overcome them. That's right. Here says he likewise the names of the women that wear the black garments. Of these also, four are more powerful than the rest. The first is unbelief. The second, intemperance. 
that unbelief is yeah. very important because that's doubt. Right. And also double mindedness. Right. And then intemperance, lack of self control. Right. Being given over to our desires. Right. These things hinder us. These are important things to focus on. The third disobedience. Can obey the law. Right. You see how these first three entirely cast us away from the hope. That's right. The fourth, deceit. These spirits are very evil, and notice they deal with the inner man, not just the outer. Because deceit, that spirit, well, you can deceive everyone else, but you can't deceive Allah. He seeth what's within us. Deceit was actually the, the chief one for hypocrisy. Because they would speak it, but they wouldn't do it. So they were deceiving the people to make it seem like they were doing what they were actually speaking when they really weren't. So you can see how deceit was, was one of the major downfalls of the Pharisees and, and that, many other people. So that gives us exhortation and understanding, brothers and sisters. It's expedient for us to focus on bearing the fruits of the Spirit ourselves before we seek to try and teach others about it when we are not doing it. Because if we're not doing it, they won't hear us. Right. Because they look at our walk. That's right. So it's right for us to focus on it ourselves, get it right, teach our children, those of us that have our children, teach our households, get our households together, and continue to bear it for continual words of righteousness. And deeds of righteousness would avail much that we may get our households together and that by that focus on bearing the fruits ourselves and speaking words of righteousness then others may believe us because they'll actually say yache we have to be an example of a believer in order to teach another and their followers are called sadness wickedness wantonness irascibility falsehood folly slander Hatred. The servant of Elohim that bear these names shall see the kingdom of Elohim, but shall not enter into it. In these spirits, we have to stand aloof from the Rahayah, provide another segment where we get to touch on them spirits again so in more in depth. Notice he has said, We shall see the kingdom, but shall not enter into it. Okay, so we have to be a, very focused to make sure none of them abide. Right? And you corroborate that with Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 22. Two, yeah, twenty-three, somewhere there. Yep. Yeah. Right, and also Apocalypse of Paul with the um, the righteous man and the impure man, because when he first died, the angels of righteousness and the angels of iniquity were there to see who whose traits he had. Right, all those evil spirits who were in came and met him. Right, and then when he was on his way to stand before Ahia, he had to go through the firmament, and they stop him before he goes in the first heaven to see if they have their qualities in you. Please, brothers and sisters, take these things to heart and really consider these things, because we all have to stand before Allah Hayyam, and we do not want to be condemned by any of these evil spirits being justified to say they have part in us, because on that day we can't make any excuse. But the stone serves, say I, that came from the deep and were lifted into the building, who are they? The first, saith he, even the ten that were placed in the foundations of the first generation. So we see who the stone, the first stones were, right? And the twenty-five are the second generation of righteous men. So these were righteous people from ancient times, the foundations. See, the church has been built of old, right? The thirty-five are Elohim's prophets and his ministers. And forty are apostles and teachers of the preaching of the Son of Elohim. Wherefore then, sir, say I, did the virgins give in these stones also for the building of the tower and carry them through the gates? Because these first, saith he, bore these spirits, and they never separated the one from the other. So they had those spirits before they in the ancient times right. the holy spirits were always there so we can understand that these people of old were righteous right because those 10 stones were before the apostles that's right yet they had the holy spirits continue neither the spirits from the man nor the men from the spirits but the spirits abode with them till they fell asleep and if they had not had these spirits with them 
they would not have been found useful for the building of this tower. There we see they had it before Yahche came and even taught us the fullness of the gospel. Therefore, we have even more to have them in these days that Yahche has come and done all he's done and revealed all these things for us. Show me still further, sir, say I. What desirest thou to know besides, saith he? Wherefore, sir, say I, did the stones come up from the deep? And wherefore were they placed into the building, though they bore these spirits? It was necessary for them, saith he, to rise up through water that they might be made alive. For otherwise they could not enter into the kingdom of Elohim, except they had put aside the deadness of their former life. And we see the baptism is necessary to enter the church. Right. So right. these likewise that had fallen asleep received the seal of the son of Elohim and entered into the kingdom of Elohim. For before a man, saith he, hath borne the name of the son of Elohim, he is dead. But when he hath received the seal, he layeth aside his deadness and resumeth life. But that's why in Romans 6 talks about being dead with him in baptism. Right. Walking in newness of life, being new creatures. Continue. The seal then is the water. So they go down into the water dead, and they come up alive. Thus to them also the seal was preached, and they availed themselves of it, that they might enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Wherefore, sir, say I, did the forty stones also come up with them from the deep? Though they had already received the seal, because, saith he, these, the apostles, and the teachers who preached the name of the son of Elohim, after they had fallen asleep in the power and faith of the son of Elohim, preached also to them that had fallen asleep before them, and themselves gave unto them the seal of the preaching. So even the dead have heard the gospel. Right. So that everyone, no one can say they didn't know. Right. Therefore they went down with them into the water and came up again. But these went down alive and again came up alive. Because they had Yahweh's name, they had the fruits of the Spirit, right. and they had the baptism. So they went down alive and came up alive. Right. This is quite amazing to see what it takes to be a part of the church. Whereas the others that had fallen asleep before them went down dead and came up alive. So by their means they were quickened into life and came to the full knowledge of the name of the son of Elohim. For this cause also they came up with them and were fitted with them into the building of the tower and were built it with them. Notice it said they came to the full knowledge. That's so it. they knew of him, but the fullness they didn't wasn't. They completely. Right. And right. the apostles came down and taught the fullness of it. Right. For this cause also they came up with them and were fitted with them into the building of the tower and were built it with them without being shaped. For they fell asleep in righteousness and in great purity. Only they had not this seal. Thou hast then the interpretation of these things also. I have, sir, say I. So they were in righteousness and purity. They just didn't have the seal of the baptism and preaching of Yahche. Right. We all have to have the name Yahche, believe the gospel of Yahche, bear the fruits of the twelve Holy Spirits, and have the water baptism. So we see how of old time this was how to get into the church, and it's still the same today. All right, so that's that segment. We're going to go into another segment. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.